Hey everybody, welcome to another Technophiles video uh, review, this time with the Samsung Galaxy S3 from Verizon. Uh, I did the Samsung Galaxy S2 uh, last year, I think it was before I was doing videos, I may not, I have to check, I've done a lot of videos. Uh, but I absolutely love the phone, I called it uh, the iPhone 4 killer, uh, basically because it came out the box and it, it really surprised everyone as soon as it came out uh, with uniqueness in design, performance, and, uh, and its capabilities. Well then Samsung went back and said, hey, let's make another one. Nothing's changed. I wouldn't say it's an iPhone killer per se. Uh, there are certain things that do need some help, but uh, overall it's uh, a bit bigger on the width and the height and uh, you get a nice quality screen. Um, but design-wise it looks very similar to a lot of phones that are already on there on the market, which when you want to, when you make a phone, you want to try to differentiate yourself, make yourself look different, you know, have a uniqueness about you. Like everyone knows when they see a phone that looks like an iPhone, they go, that's an iPhone. Even without having to turn on or do whatever, that same boxy rounded shape, that's an iPhone. And these phones all kind of look the same. Like the HTC One X looks kind of similar to this one. There's, you know, certain differences in the accents on the tops and the bottoms, but overall, same kind of look. Uh, let's run down some of the spec lists on this one. It's uh, 5.38 inches high, uh, 2.7 inches wide, with a depth of 0.34 inches, and it weighs about 4 ounces. So it's relatively small, thin, very compact. Uh, it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor with 1.5 dual core G CPU. Uh, Android 4.0 right out the box. Uh, it has 2 gigabytes of RAM. Um, uh, 16 to 32 gigabytes of internal memory, but that's upgradable up to 64 gigabytes of memory with the micro SD. So unlike the HTC One X that I reviewed from AT&T, that you can't add anything to, this one you can. Um, the camera is an 8 megapixel camera with zero shutter lag LED flash. Uh, it literally starts up in like one second. It's ridiculous how quickly that thing kicks on. And that's the back camera here. The front camera is 1.9 megapixel uh, front facing camera. Uh, it does shoot full HD 1080p video. Uh, let's see. Um, Trying to remember some of the other stuff. Oh, yeah, it is a uh, 4.8 uh, inch uh, HD Super AMOLED screen. Uh, dimensions of 1280 by 720. Uh, it has the S beam, which means you, you can send things via NFC. Uh, also has the bump to touch, which I couldn't find anyone else that had this, so I couldn't really play with it. Uh, S-Voice, which is their their interpretation of Siri, needs work. It cuts you off mid-sentence a lot of times, and it became very, very agitating. Uh, it has S-Note, and uh, if you have a stylus, you can draw on it, kind of like you do with the Samsung Galaxy Note. Uh, this one, you can just doodle with your finger, and it, it, it's all right if you have no stylus. With a stylus, I'm pretty sure that's enough screen space to kind of get whatever you need to do. Uh, motion activation, um, if you're looking at the screen, it won't shut off, it won't automatically time out because it has the front facing camera and the facial recognition, which also you can have the facial unlock, uh, not very secure, but it's still a fun feature. Uh, so if you're looking at it, no matter what, it won't time out, even if you have it on for 30 seconds, it's not going to time out as long as you're looking at the screen. So that's very cool. Um, overall, the uh, ooh, I have mentions. Um, the screen itself, you can see here, is uh, ooh, let's get back to that. There we go. It's very nice, very clean, very cl very crisp. Uh, the screens jump from side to side very quickly. Uh, applications uh, boot up very fast. Uh, downloading speed, if you have 4G LTE, which there is none around here, uh, speed's comparable. Uh, internet experience is very nice. The page loads up, pages loaded up very quickly. Um, the camera itself, the qualities are very, very well. Um, very crisp, very clear. Uh, do get some uh, shading issues from time to time at certain certain photos. Not all of them, just certain ones. If there's an overabundance of light, some cameras will use that light to accentuate the foreground. This one sometimes just kind of blows it out, so it's all washed out. Uh, video quality, excellent. Enjoyed it a lot. Took a lot of videos of my son playing football and hockey and trying not to kill other little kids. Um, 
playback on it was smooth and easy to find the gallery and just swipe across, do whatever. Uh, uploading is very easy. Everything on it is, is a nice phone. Some of the drawbacks. Um, the power button and the volume rocker kind of get in the way when you're talking. Because I, I have a big hand, so when I'm holding it, you know, you kind of hold it at certain angles so you don't hit the buttons, which you've gotten used to. But a lot of people that have let hold the phone notice that they would either hit the volume button or the power button. Um, I kind of like the power buttons up on top. Now the volume rocker could be up a little bit higher, so it's out of the mid range of the whole of the device, like right in the middle. Uh, the other thing I don't like is the back casing is flimsy. Now, when you're paying $279 for a high-end phone, you're kind of expecting a little bit better quality than just the plastic back. And here's the the back part, and there's your, your SIM card and your micro SD card and the battery. Battery life is about nine hours uh, that I could find. Standby talk time is ridiculous. Um, you can find it on uh, AT&T, I think uh, T-Mobile will have it. I think there's a couple other that will have it. Let me check real quick, see where it's all going to be available at. Uh, damn things everywhere. So, um, so overall, I mean, the phone was really nice. The call qualities were good. The speaker phone, which is very small and tiny right here, actually produced a decent amount of sound. Uh, playback on the video, the sound quality was... Uh, somewhat overbearing at times where it wouldn't sound very crisp, very clear. Um, Netflix worked very well on that one. Um, the video again showing off on full 1080p video. Um, when you use the Netflix and get the HD quality video then it really shows how the, you know, the colors are very vivid, they're very bright, they pop off. The darks are darks, the whites are whites. So it's pretty much what everybody's looking for. Uh, screen size very nice. I like. I, I'm a big fan of the bigger screen. Like, if I could, I'd, I'd want to get the Samsung Galaxy Note when it comes to T-Mobile. Hopefully, I'll get that when it comes out August 8th. So probably by the time this video is out, it'll be up. Um, overall, very nice. I like how they have minimal buttons down here. Just the uh, the back search button, the back button, the home key, and uh, I guess you'd call that just the settings feature or the menu option, if you will. Uh, you can jump to the hotkeys when you first kick on. When you turn it on, you have the, the call, and make an email, Gmail, and camera, and you can jump right to it. As soon as you do it, it'll jump right. Oh, yeah, of course, I'll never do this flash. But yeah, there's the. So you see the kind of thing you work with. I took a photo of me, and I didn't even know it. Look at me go. See, it's so a good photo. Uh, this was an outside photo taken. Uh, the sun was about five o'clock, so it was almost directly uh, behind me. But you can kind of see the image quality on that one. On the outdoors, is is very stupendous. Plus, you get to zoom in, pinch to zoom. And once you get really high in detail, then you can kind of see the the jaded, uh, the jagged edgings. But yeah, you know, it's it's nice. I mean, it's a good phone. I was expecting more actually from it. I really was. I was expecting a lot more from uh, the third generation of the Samsung Galaxy S series, where uh, the Samsung S2 blew everybody away. The Samsung Galaxy S3, it's getting kind of mixed. Like it's like a little mixed bag. Whether you, you love Samsung, then you're gonna love the phone if you. We're kind of on the fence about it. You know, you can either get this one or the HTC variety because they're almost the same. The only thing that's different is just the uh, user interface, really. Uh, this one's very minimalistic, which is always nice from Samsung. But, you know, again, it all just comes down to personal preference. For me, I like smartphones. It's better than what I got. It's one of the better smartphone Androids out there. Uh, this is a buy it. Um, you're not going to go wrong with it. It's going to last you a good while. It's a good quality internal phone the again the outside plasticky bit is notwithstanding so you might want to get a case it's good to get a case with this one seems that like the plastic back might pop off at any moment 
But thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out the podcast. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, subscribe if you like. Check us out on Twitter and on Facebook, on Google Plus. When we do our Google Hangouts, we do our podcast lives. You can join in, leave questions, comments, complaints, whatever you want. But I'm Kai with thetechnophiles.com. This has been another video review. The Samsung Galaxy S3 is a buy it for $279 on a two year contract. That's a little much. But it'll go down over time. So if you don't jump on the bandwagon now, you can wait a little bit. I'm pretty sure the drop price is going to drop, and then you can jump on board then when it's a little bit more reasonable. So, again, we'll see you later. Thanks a lot, and have fun. See you. Time to go make some more photos. <laughs>